Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Run through the land, you run through my soul. Bring me wisdom and peace. Run through all ages and all of life's days. Hey, welcome to Be My Guest. This is Jan Lewis, your host. Today we have a very interesting guest. Her name is Carol Erlich. She's an RN, MBA, but she's a professional organizer and home staging person. And she is a contributing organizer to the A&E show, Hoarders. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that show. Welcome, Carol. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate how it. How did I find you? Do, how did I, we connect? Do you remember? I think through the Clear Path okay. group oh. in, out of Hudson and Marlboro. Yeah. And so you, we won't focus too much on the RN right now, but it's very important. You became an RN and you worked for years in that field. Mm -hmm. Then what made you decide to go into the staging and the hoarding? Well, after I did the direct nursing, I did internal management consulting at companies, and that morphed into my focusing on organizational issues for companies. So I was working with individuals and organizations to help them move, move forward. So for example, if Bank A wanted to merge with Bank B, mm -hmm. I would work with a company to make sure that all the people involved knew what they needed to do, when they needed to do it, if they needed new training. And a bulk of that work is focused on psychological and social and emotional mm. issues and challenges because the people usually didn't wake up one day and say, yeah. I think I want to have my bank merged. Mm. It was all done to them. Mm. So I have a lot of experience in understanding people and what their motivations are and figuring out clever ways to help them move forward with the things that they want to accomplish. Well, she brought a really terrific sign. Paul, if you can zero in mm -hmm. on her um, her sign there. It's, it talks about too much stuff, Yeah. professional organizing and home staging, and it tells how to call Carol. And this is, you know, I think, where Carol, where do you draw the line between being, being maybe messy and being a hoarder? You can't walk through the house if you're hoarding, right, really? Well, the official definition of a hoarder, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. is when a house has become to a situation where the rooms can no longer be used for the intention that they were designed in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if someone is unable to use their kitchen to wash food or prepare food or to sit down and have a meal, then it's possible that that might be a hoarding situation. So if a person's entire house is usable, but one room has been dedicated as a storage room, that's not a hoarding situation. It means they have a large junk drawer yeah. or a large room to be right. used for that purpose. So it's dedicated to junk. That That's different than it being all over the house, right? Right. That's different than it's being all over. And typically hoarders have some combination of, some of them over acquire more than they would ever need in a lifetime. And some people have a lot of difficulty parting with things. Yeah. And so those two things combined with um, basically not being able to have their spaces be used as intended mm -hmm. is often um, the situation. I think I saw on the show something about, or read somewhere, Carol, mm -hmm. that it can also I'll often follow in the footpath of a severe loss in that person's life. Yes. So there are all studies that have been done that can be read about where sometimes people's brains are wired differently if they're um, not easily able to organize things. but on occasion, as you've mentioned, there can be a trauma that initiates the person's hoarding behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's very real. And um, many of my hoarding clients do have uh, psychotherapy in addition to my working with them. Yeah. And it's usually easier to be helpful to a hoarder when that person is willing to ask for and or accept help. So sometimes I get calls from people who are either a spouse or a child or a parent or a relative or a friend of a hoarder saying, oh, I know someone who's a hoarder. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to go to their house when they're away for a week's vacation and clean the house? And the answer is absolutely not. That's not something yeah, that's yeah. useful or helpful. That would scare the living bejesus out of that's, someone. <laughs> that's a terrible thing to yeah, do. Yeah. So when someone asks for help on the behalf of someone else, I say, 
do we have that person's permission? Yeah. May I speak with that person to make sure that we have their permission? And if that's the case, then of course I will come and help. Yeah. And I look at those situations as it's not just the individual who needs the help. It's usually a family situation. Yeah. So a lot of stress. A lot of stress. Anger, rage, a lot of res anger, resentment. Oh. There's fear. There's a lot of um, embarrassment and um, a feeling of, gee, I'm not, I'm not a good enough person, and what's wrong with me, and how come this? And so, lots of times, people are um, unwilling to have me in their home. But I have, for example, I have one client who she is a hoarder, and mm -hmm. she's been a hoarder her whole life. And when she called me, I could tell that she was quite hesitant. She yeah. initiated contact by my email, right. which yeah. uh, you can give there, that out in a minute. Sure, you can give it right now if you'd like to. Um, well, okay, I can give you the uh, website address. It's uh, Bolton, like the town, B O L T O N, Bolton Organizing and Staging dot com. I know it's long, but that's a way that you can reach me as well. So this person had reached out by email. Mm -hmm. And she was quite hesitant and had some questions, and I just had a sense that she preferred the email route for starters, and then we talked on the phone, and then she decided that she did want help. And I was the first person that she allowed into her home for 20 years. Whoa, not even family. Not even family. So Could you get through the door to huge. climb? I, I could get in her door. There was nowhere for me to sit, but I could get in the door. Yeah. Um, but I did have another client where... Um, all these people are lovely. They're all lovely. They just need help with their organizing. So yeah. this other client um, had been a hoarder for a long time. There was something that initiated the hoarding behavior. And I actually met her. She had come to a talk that I gave mm -hmm. at the Council on Aging in Stowe, Massachusetts. And she spoke to me after the the presentation mm -hmm. and she said that she had done research before the meeting, thought that I was the right person for her but wanted to come in a non-threatening situation to see if I was yeah, the right person for she her. Got to feel, yeah. She thought I was the right person for her. Before she would allow me into her home, she wanted to meet with me at a in a neutral setting, which we did. Somewhere, we yeah. met at a coffee yeah, shop, yeah. and we met for several hours, and I talked her through and with her what to expect, what she would be asked to do, how it would work, and she needed that baseline to feel comfortable enough to have me into her home mm -hmm. and she also needed some time to make the house so the front door could be opened so she worked on making it so the front door could be opened and then when I went to the home so if you could picture my coming into the front door yeah I'm picturing and, it yeah and she well, is the one looking out yeah and I could tell when I went in that oh. she was petrified that I was seeing all this. So what I suggested is I said, until you get settled while I'm here, I said, why don't we trade places? What a great so idea. I had her looking toward the house, and yeah. I was just looking at her in the front door. And she was directing you, but you had to move, go walk backwards, well, right? that, that Well, that was just for me to get in the house. Just in the door, okay. And that gave her some time to try to relax and be calm so that she would then be ready to have me see and enter the home. How long did it take before she was ready? Oh, not bad, maybe 10 minutes or so. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, but that's an example of how, again, the experience that I've had as a nurse and with all my business work, I, I have, I won't say it's a sixth sense, because I don't know if there really is a sixth sense, but I am quite intuitive, and I can pretty quickly understand what might be helpful to a person so that we can go forward in the work. Now, you were a nurse until what year? And when, then, then how did you get into hoarding, helping people? Well, so I went from the nursing work to the consulting work where I was working with companies to help individuals move forward. Mm -hmm. And then about, I think it was six or seven years ago, I was just personally exhausted from being on a plane every week because my clients were all somewhere else. And I thought, how can I be as helpful to people and continue to help individuals and family move forward, but on a more local basis. Yeah. And then I thought, oh my goodness, I could do this professional organizing. I've got yeah. all the skills. I have the interest. Yeah. I any work that I do, I want to be. I want to be challenged. Yeah. And as I said, I like to help people and help them move forward. So this is a really perfect match, right. and it uses all the pieces of my brain 
and it's very challenging. It's never boring. And no, it doesn't sound like it'll be ever be boring. It's not boring. No. <laughs> and I just love it. And because of the business business experience that I've had, um, sometimes I have clients. It can be on a small scale. This doesn't have anything to do with hoarding per se. Mm -hmm. Some people might be selling a house that's a thousand square feet. I've had clients like that, mm -hmm. but I also had clients who had a three and a half million dollar mansion mm -hmm. and it was 8,000 square feet in the home and 3,000 square feet in the carriage house and I had three weeks to sort out the whole house, I mean, with nine air, so all that, bit, and they said, here are the keys, figure it out. But don't you have assistance? I mean, you can't do it alone. Well, in that case, I, hi I didn't hire, I called um, the uh, auction houses mm -hmm. to have them come and then I had other people that we hired to come and after the auction people came to do the next level of looking through things so when I'm working with a client I do all the physical work that makes sense for me to do right. I'm very hands-on I work with clients 95% of the time once in a rare while I do something on my own which I can explain in a minute sure. if you want mm -hmm. but when there's you know, 11,000 square feet that needs to be emptied, yeah. I don't have a truck to go empty 11,000 Like on TV, feet. we see that big truck out there, right? Right. Now, that's not what Carol has. Right, I don't have a truck. So how do they haul away, you know, they say the keep pile, the haul away pile. How do they, what do you call someone? Or? Well, what we do is, um, just as you've suggested, we separate out when someone is trying to get more organized or if they're downsizing or moving to another location or something, we separate out for the client what they definitely want to keep in their lives, wherever that is, if it's in that home or in another home. Okay. The things that they want to donate, and the donation has two categories. It can be donating to someone they know and love. So, oh, I really, my sister always admired the sweater. It doesn't fit me anymore. I'd like her okay. to have it, yeah. which is usually a small pile. Okay. And then there's the pile of donating to people they don't know. The charity. The okay. charities. And because I work locally, I am familiar with all the local organizations that uh, accept charitable donations. Thrift Shop, Salvation all the Army. Thrift Shop, Love Salvation <laughs> Army. So I know who comes to the door, who doesn't come to the door, yeah. who charges, who doesn't, who does the labor for you, how long the lead time is. So I'm familiar with all that. And then we also have a pile for things that can be recycled. Mm -hmm. And I, I am happy when people recycle. I encourage it. But once in a while, a client won't want to recycle. Obviously, it's up to them. It's their home and their possessions. And then... After you do all those things, mm -hmm. what's left over is what I call real trash. And there's usually not that much real trash. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you pick what you want, and by the time you pick what you want to donate, if you're willing to donate, and by the time you recycle, most things are usable by other people. Yeah. But yeah. occasionally, there's stuff that can't be fixed, can't mm. be used for parts, whatever, and like, it's real trash. Like the dead mice on the ground. Yeah. Where do they go to the bathroom? I've seen on this show, it's, you, you know, I mean, oh, there's yeah. no place to go to the bathroom even. Yes. That's that's an extreme. Have you ever walked in on that? Yes. Oh. Um, when I was hired to work on the hoarder show, the woman who was the client had not had a work, she had a big house, she had not had a working toilet for years. So oh, when we walked in, yeah. you didn't step on the ground. There was probably bags full of... You stepped on several feet oh. of belongings that had been uh, covered with human Excrement, waste. Excrement, yes. Waste. <laughs> oh. And it was interesting because when the men usually were taller and they were hitting the ceiling when they walked. I mean, it was... Did you feel like you were going to lose your lunch? No. I'm, you, I'm used you're to okay it. with I, that. Yeah. I, I because they go in with awful. masks, I notice. Yeah, you know, they do. Yeah, oh, it's so sad. How it's did you get sad. the word out locally about what you do? How long has it taken you to really get? Well, it? my business progresses every year, mm -hmm. so every year I get more and more clients, and although it continues to surprise me, my clients, as I go forward, have more and more complex situations. You know, just when I think it couldn't get any more complex, yeah. it gets more complex. So a lot of the hoarding yeah. clients have multiple attendant issues. Uh, quite a few of my clients have some combination of obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. I have several clients with Asperger's. Um, so all those things, when you put them together, and a lot of them also have high anxiety disorder. So yeah. it's really quite challenging. And so to answer your question, when I first started the business, I 
did a lot of local one-on-one -on -one, um, finding of people who had a complimentary, complimentary business to mine. So I thought, okay, given what I'm doing, I went and spoke with local funeral directors, figuring they would know when someone died if the family need help sorting out the wow. estate. Okay. I met with financial advisors. Mm -hmm. I met with elder care lawyers. I met with real estate lawyers, realtors, um, health care facilities, councils mm -hmm. on aging. So I thought of all the people who would know who who has someone who needs help. So you picked up the phone and said, I'm going to call this, this funeral parlor and speak yep. with the director and, and say what I do, and then he'll... He'll take it from there. Yeah, it wasn't that easy. No. But it was, because I found that just calling people cold doesn't really go No, far. an email is okay. No, but, no. You know. So I did it. I am old-fashioned. I did the old-fashioned You way. went right to their door. Well, first I found out who the people were. Yep. Then I wrote a lovely personalized letter to each person in the regular mail and said, you know, with your permission, I will follow up in two weeks' time. And I called them whenever I said it. And then we had a phone conversation. Then may I come to meet with you? And then I followed up with thank you. So... And I've tried over the years to keep these contacts up. And I also made connections with local psychotherapists who specialize in clients who have ADD and ADHD. I didn't mention that before, but a lot of my clients have those issues. Mm. And my clients range in age from 8 to 86. Eight? Eight. Yes, I have quite a few children and adolescents who are clients. Wow. And usually it's the parents who start as the clients, and then I try to involve the children, and then I work just with the children. Yeah. And I, I love children and have a really good way with them. And it's, it's really nice to know that I'm helping not just adults, but children move forward because they, they have an extra 80 years. Oh, yeah. To Not use more. all the things that they've learned. Yeah, definitely. So you you know you can tell Carol enjoys um, her work. This is Carol Ehrlich, and she has mm -hmm. been the uh, contributing organizer on the A and E show Hoarders. And Carol is also an RN with an MBA. She's the professional organizer and home staging. Now home staging is that like we're going to sell our house? Yeah. But I don't know what the heck to do. Yes. To make it look good, go to you. Yes. What's that like for you? So. The, the home staging is maybe 5 to 10% of my business. It's quite smaller, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. And the, the key for when you're trying to sell your house is to make it look as inviting as possible to whomever may be coming as a pr prospective buyer. So I encourage clients to have the house show very simply, neatly, cleanly. So for me, and I say me because home stages are different, just like everything else, it's not about house beautiful. Mm. It's not about how can we take this house and decorate it. No, it's taking it's, your private pictures down, right? It's how can we take mm -hmm. your house yeah. and make it look vanilla. Yeah. And what I explain to people is that they've spent 20 or 30 years, however long they've lived in the house, making their room, their house personalized to them. And this whole exercise is to depersonalize the house. Yeah. So the, the strategy for doing this is basically getting organized and simplified and taking things out of the home that are just distracting to the people who are coming in to look. Where do you put it, though? In a, like a, in a pod or well, something? Well, it depends. Sometimes it's a pod. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a friend's basement. Sometimes they don't need it in their lives anymore, so it just gets donated yeah, or it's given away. Yeah. And what you mentioned earlier is definitely a good suggestion, which is if there are any um, items that might offend even a single prospective buyer, I suggest they be taken away. So that's any personal photographs, even sometimes people have diplomas on the wall. Yeah. The people are coming in don't need to know your middle name, your last name, the mm -hmm. privacy thing. Mm -hmm. If there are, I call it moose heads. Some people are hunters, they love the moose oh, heads. Oh, take the head down. But then there are people who are the anti-moose heads. Yeah. And so you don't want moose heads, and you don't want a peace sign on the wall. You yeah. don't want any political things, anything that could possibly say, well, I don't want to live here because I don't support that candidate. Yeah, I gotcha. And Definitely. it's um, it's often hard for clients to hear because they don't really get it. Mm -hmm. But I had one client, the house was lovely, and she was, uh, um, I forget exactly what her job title was, but she had all things to do with... Um, an anthropologist. Yeah. So she had all these very nicely arranged animal skulls. Yeah. You know, sort of like a museum exhibit. Yeah. And I said, this is a lovely exhibit, 
But there might be some people who don't want to look at animal skulls. So how about if we pack them away? How'd she take that? She was fine. Okay. You know, I I positioned it away that I always honor whatever it is. This is a lot. And it was. It was a lovely museum showing of skulls. Mm. But some people don't want to see mouse skulls. You know, they don't. Yeah. They, they don't <laughs> want to see it as an object of beauty and desire. Yeah. No. I, so I, that is so good because you go and you look at some real estate for sale, and nine times out of ten, it's been really cleaned up. I've never oh, yeah. had any comp. You know. Well, with it. I. This is for me for my house when I was looking quite a few years ago. I I went to. I almost can't believe I'm saying this out loud on TV, but. I went to see a home for sale, and there was a dead mouse right in the middle of the living room. What? And I thought... They hmm. hadn't been living there very long, had they? <laughs> and I called the realtor over, and I said, hmm. I said, there's a dead mouse here. I said, it doesn't necessarily speak... You know, it's New England. Yeah. But, but I suggest before you show it to the next person, somebody do something with it. Because not everybody's okay with a dead mouse. So anyway, you oh. see all kinds of things. Oh. You see all kinds I've of things. I've never seen... How do you get the word out a lot? Do you get presentations? I think you'd be awesome at giving I, senior, senior centers. Things like yes, that? I've given presentations to senior centers and to some councils on aging, and mm-hmm. I also gave a presentation at my local library. Um, I've occasionally, but just once in a while, have given presentations to local um, civic groups, and I, I choose not to spend 40 hours a week doing that. Mm-hmm. I'd rather be working with my clients, sure. but once in a while, I do that. And... Um, I'm, I'm tracking back to your question from before of how do I let people know. Yeah, so the one so thing that I did was was meet with all these people right. coldly, so yes, to speak. I know the feeling. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And then I joined a formal networking group for a year, the kind that meets every week. What kind, what, what was its title? It was um, BNI. Oh, I know that one. So yeah. I joined BNI, mm-hmm. and that was another way to meet people. And what I've done is each year that I've been in business, I try something different. Mm. So one year I tried print advertising, and that was not successful, so I didn't do that again. And another thing that I've done that I've done for a few years, because it does provide me with some potential clients, is I pay to be a part of a lead generation system. And it's, it's called findmyorganizer.com, and there are lots of organizers there, mm-hmm. and that I get some leads that way. Yeah, but doesn't that competitive? Doesn't it kind of competitive, right? It is competitive. But how do you get a client if someone else grabs the client? Well, because the everyone has a little blurb that they write about themselves, yeah. and most people have a website, and I okay. have a website. Yeah. And the complexion of people who do the organizing can your be quite different. Yeah, your personality. Yeah. And clients, prospective clients and clients have told me that that my way of doing things and my orientation really does come through. Yeah. So what comes through is that I am very caring and straightforward and supportive mm-hmm. and not only willing to work with hoarders, but it's a specialty of mine because many organizers will not work with hoarders at all. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, and I also list on the site that a lot of my clients have those issues, as I mentioned before. Yeah. So then when someone reads that, they'll say, oh, I can relate to this. I think she may be able to help me. And, for example, I have another client who um, some people he works with were helping him find an organizer. And so there were a few who were looked at. And the woman who was telling me this, who was doing the initial searching, said, you know, I found one organizer who mostly rearranges baby rooms. Oh. And that wasn't a suitable match for this particular person. Sure. And so there's a little bit of, of weeding out there. Well, it comes across, you know, I only talked with you once on the phone, mm-hmm. right? And I only just met you today. Yeah. But you can tell she looks directly at you. Mm-hmm. And what is the word? Compassionate? There's a compassionate yeah. intellect. You know, you can tell somebody something and they might not like it, but it's the way you would do it, I can tell. Um, how do people reach you, Carol? Well, there are different ways that they can reach me. One is they can call me directly. And my phone number, I believe, is visible here. It's 978-779-5439. Mm-hmm. And if you do call and get the answering machine, please just leave a message. When I'm working with clients, I am not answering the phone for anybody else because my focus is totally on the client at that time. If you'd rather not talk to me initially, you can send an email. My email is CE, like my initials for Carol Ehrlich, CE and the number 35. So it's CE35 at Cornell, C O R N E L L dot E D U. Or as I said earlier in the show, 
you can look on my website, which has all the information. It's boltonorganizingandstaging.com. And I welcome any calls. Um, what I usually do with clients on the phone is we'll have an initial conversation and I'll find out what they're looking for, what their time frame is, mm -hmm. and I try to give them enough information about me and answer any questions that they have so that they can decide if I'm the right person for them. Sure. Mm -hmm. And what prospective clients, not always, but will occasional sit, occasionally say is, oh, well, would you just come to my house and look at the garage? Mm -hmm. Or would you just come to my house and look at my storage room? Will you do that? No. I don't, because what I say to clients is, all due respect to your storage room or your garage, whatever it is, it is. I've yet to be asked to do work that I've been unable to handle very just right. And a, a part of the complexion of people who need organizing help is procrastination. Mm -hmm. So what they would like to do is have me come to look, yeah. and then they feel like, oh, they did something constructive. And that was it. But then they just put off doing the work. So what do you say to them? What I say to them is, here's... You know, after we've answered all the questions, I say, this is what it would look like if I came. So on the phone now, we'll talk about your priorities and what you want to do and what we're trying to get out of this, because it's very action-oriented. Yeah. We do a lot of talking, but it's, also within the, it's always within the context of the work that we do. Right. And I'll say that when I first come to the house, I will ask them, I ask their permission to please have them show me all parts of the house, quickly. So I don't want to spend an hour in the playroom yeah. or an hour in the kitchen. It's three to five minutes in each room so I can get a look and find out from them, from a family perspective, if they're a family, yeah. who does what one in, who does what when in each room. You know, if this is the living room, is this only once a year when company comes, or is this where the family meets after dinner? Mm -hmm. So that way I get a sense of... What's where, dedicated? What's dedicated, what's not, mm -hmm. what the pattern flows of the family are or aren't, what their needs are, so that any solution I come up with is completely focused on their needs. It's not like there's, you know, a little checklist, okay, this yeah. family did this, this, this. Yeah. It's what do you need as a family? It's not cookie cutter. It's not cookie cutter at all. That's great. What can I do that's going to make it work better for them? And then after we have the quick walkthrough, mm -hmm. plus seeing all the different spaces of the house allows me to think if we're working in the kitchen, then I can think, well, a better place for this would be the storage room. Mm -hmm. So that way I have a picture of the whole house. <clears throat> then as soon as we're done, I ask them what priority area they'd like to start working on. Mm -hmm. Some clients know, some people have no clue. If they have no clue, I say, no worries, based on what you've told me, mm -hmm. here's my suggestion. And then we start working right away. Mm -hmm. And by starting working on it right away, it does a few things. Number one, it eases their fears a little bit because mm -hmm. they don't have time to be panicked because I mm -hmm. remind them all the time, you're paying me by the hour. Mm -hmm. This is valuable time. We can't mess around. We have to work. So that yeah. helps. Yeah. And what I always explain to them and then follow through by showing is whatever area we'll work on, it's a small enough prescribed area that they will see results mm -hmm. in a very short time frame. Oh, that's important to have and that feed, you know, that feed It's thing. a really big piece. So that, and I'll say to them, you will feel right away, like within a half an hour, like you're accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. And while we're working, I explain to people what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, what my thought process is, so that hopefully, if they hear it enough, they'll be able to adopt those thought processes so they can do the work without me. Carol, we need to go, but thank you so much for being here. Oh, on. you're welcome. It was a pleasure. You thank you so much. We should have you back, too. I'd love uncle. to come back. All right, we'll see you next time. Again, thank I you guess. so much. Run, river, run. Run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run. To your place beneath the sun Run river, run over me Run